It's more than just running. Trust me, trust me, I got you. Just trust me, trust me. It's being able to survive and live through running. We got a little bit of vibe right now. Let's go. In life, we have to go through so much discomfort and find new ways to handle it, find new ways to shatter that limit. Those boxes make us stronger. Like, if nobody else is doing it, I'm going to do it. Running is just breaking through that wall and shattering your limits over and over again. And I know that I can apply that to being a better human and being better at life. We out here. We out here. I've been able to keep my community moving. Hell yeah. That is sick baby. Running works. Running is our peace. Yeah, the thing about trails, man, is it's all about going with the flow of the terrain. It's almost like a choose your own adventure. The pros power hike 80% of trail races. Oh, so they're not running the whole time. They're not running the whole time. Okay, I could get jiggy with this. Oh, oh there you go. So we're gonna be starting up here by the Palisades, make our way down to the George Washington Bridge. And we're just gonna get into the heights, and some trails as well. And then once we get uptown, we'll go around with the crew. With Josh, I get to see not only his community and his people, but <laughs> who he is as a person by running in the place that he grew up in. Met up with Arm this morning, so you can get some trail vibes. It's pretty dope to showcase what kind of running you can do uptown. Let's go. Having been 250 pounds and unathletic pretty much most of my life, six years ago I wasn't running at all. I was working a high-stress engineering job. One night, I decided to put on the pair of sneakers that I had and go outside and ran a quarter of a mile. And it was like the most nauseating thing I've ever done, but I had quit so many things in my life. I just wanted to know what would happen if I just kept going. That quarter of a mile changed my life. I had started getting on the trails and just running more and more and more. I found my way to ultras in a 50K and 100 miler led me into the world of 200 milers and culminated in a 300 miler on a one mile loop. As a pro ultra runner, you're power hiking, you're running, you're going up and down mountains, crossing rivers, going through all kinds of weather conditions, your feet are shredded, you're on sleep deprivation, so you're taking 10, 15 minute trail naps. I am going to put down over a thousand racing miles this year. Yeah. Back to the concrete jungle, baby. Back to the concrete jungle, let's go. You said that you started running about six years ago? Yeah. So I'm definitely the pro here. Yeah, you're definitely <laughs> the pro, man. I'm the rook here, man. Hey, look at my man, CJ. Yo, CJ, he left him hanging. Oh! My name sound like nails on a chalk. My nature is concrete jungle. We run on the street how we feel. Like, we feeling good, we looking good, we looking pretty, we're gonna run pretty, you know? If my feet can get there, we're gonna fucking go. These are streets that I've been running for over 10 years. There's not one inch where I have not ran. I know it by the back of my hand. I am the co-founder of We Run Uptown. My group runs on Mondays. There's a group of people that is all shapes and sizes and we want everybody to feel comfortable. We want you to feel like family. It's like 500 something consecutive nights of us running like 100 people every single Monday night. We've been doing it for 10 years. Uptown! Uptown! Yeah, so now we enter in Washington Heights. This is uh, what they call a little Dominican Republic. Okay. In the 90s, there was an influx of Dominicans that came uptown, and a lot of them were first generation immigrants like myself. You always kind of were put in the box because nobody really believed that you can do anything. I want to be a part of it. When we first started our We Run Uptown group a little over 10 years ago, there was no running groups, no for Central Park. It was probably like my co-founder, Hector, myself, and probably like three other people. There were a lot of times that we got pulled over by the police. They would get pulled over and like, yo, what are you guys doing? Why are y'all running? But we allow ourselves to be able to not care about what other people think. Everybody that came was like, well, I live here now. I'm going to make this my place. So over time, it became a big-ass family. It changed what running meant to us and to our neighborhood as well. Like it was like, oh wait, there are people like us that run. Those boxes kind of make us stronger.
Yeah, my mom. She didn't really understand what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. Right, so like, she started really seeing multiple events, hundreds of people. Like, Yo, you're really doing this shit for running. Like my parents didn't know, like, for a few years that I was doing this shit for some living. He's like, wait, you don't work? <laughs> What's your job? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I'm a first generation Indian American. My parents came over from Gujarat, India. There is a sense of like identity crisis that I think a lot of immigrants have that I went through where I felt like I was essentially too Indian to be American, too American to be Indian. I felt like I was trapped in this box where I had no safe space for myself. So like when my partner Hector and I started, we went uptown. Running wasn't really seen by people by us, like us. I always believe that you gotta be able to see yourself in the sport and sometimes you gotta start by standing alone, like you stood alone and then you had your people rally behind you. One foot in front of the other, right? One foot in front of the other. Right, let's get rolling. I'm grateful for my parents. They had hustled so hard for me to live a better life in the States than they lived in India. That's the American dream is you're an engineer, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer, make money, you get a house, you get married. And for the longest time, I was on the fast track to that success. I got to 25 or 26 and I just realized like, I feel so empty. Beautiful, huh? I turned to isolation and eventually turned to suicidal ideation and it led to a moment where I almost called it. I just looked up at the mirror about to make the decision and I realized that nobody was going to save me. I had to go out and just keep fighting and just give myself another chance and I'm really glad I did. I've always had like the weight of expectations on me for what my family thinks I should be, what the people in my community thought I should be. Did you have some of that with like the people around you and the people in your community? I mean, most definitely because I think um, me being a first generation immigrant, you kind of realize that you have a big responsibility, you know, because you're the first person to be doing something like this. Or something as simple as holding a space for people to come and run. Yeah. You know, like the impact that that has on our neighborhood has been like pretty amazing. Yeah, I just did it for myself first. And then I realized like, when people started reaching out, like who I was representing, what we get to do is a privilege. And yeah. us being able to have the impact that we do is a privilege too. Like, now you're gonna see right now when we pull up, you're gonna see. Oh, you can feel that. Oh yeah, nah, <laughs> they feel it. Oh, yeah. Uptown sauce? I don't know, I guess it's the way we dress, the way we talk. This is our slang, this is our lingo. This is New York City, like the whole world copy and pasted us. I think downtown or Brooklyn, it's very different. This is like the speaker box of New York City, so like everybody talks really loud, or listens to music really loudly, express their feelings through the music. And I think it's beautiful, to be honest. I think it makes uptown, you know? I love that shit. You know, it's just the vibe. When you really want to run in the city, you kind of just got to be able to not think about limitations. You just dodge traffic if you're in the way. It's kind of like trail running. You just catch a vibe. It just goes with the flow. Trust me, trust me, I got you. Just trust me, trust me. Beat it. Oh, there you go. And just to warm up our bodies, if you case you need to, get on your toes, wake those feet up. Wake those ankles up, wake them up, wake them up, wake them up. How's everybody feeling today? I want to introduce y'all to my man Arm is from Cali, and he's a pro ultra trail runner. This is his first time in New York. This is a lot of their first time here, so. Let's get started! Running is something that everybody could do. Like, literally anybody and everybody, any shape and size, and I think that's kind of what the vibe is of town. I think Arm felt a whole bunch of energy, a whole bunch of diversity. All the people coming up to him and saying hi, like them meeting a pro Osha Trail Runner was like amazing. And also Arm just feeling at home. We out here. We out here. I think we, we both had a lot of the same challenges and struggles and allows us to understand that it's more than just running. 
I would have never imagined that running would become that place I could call my home. It made me realize that in life we have to go through so much discomfort. I know that I can put myself through that discomfort and find new ways to handle it, find new ways to shatter that limit and apply that to my mentality, not just in future ultras, but in being a better human and being better at life. Anytime I get a chance, I always tend to look back and like just stop just to appreciate like the madness of people just moving across the street, like, you know? As somebody who is generally out in the mountains alone and in my own headspace, there was something special about being out here on the East Coast and in New York, in the hustle and bustle. Being out there with the WR crew and Josh really reminded me of I was less about the miles and more about just community. I didn't even know I had people that look up to me until like recently. You know, like somebody's dad was like, oh yeah, my son looks up to you. He thinks you're a dope person. Like I'm not, I haven't even done anything crazy, you know, but in retrospect, I have because I've been able to keep my community moving. Oh, yeah. When I have my kids, I definitely want them to be coming to run on the runs with us because at some point, I'm gonna not be able to run and somebody's gonna have to do it. So the day that I can't, I hope that there's somebody like running, we run uptown and like continuing the good work and adding on to the good work that we've been doing in our neighborhood. Yo, come on. <laughs> That's amazing. That's such a, that is a sick view, man. It's like Hector says, buy uptown for uptown. Definitely yay. Oh, no way! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>